Robert's over Classic Rocks, 96.7 The Eagle. It's Double T, special guest on the phone, Scott Paddock, track president from Chicagoland Speedway. Scott, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, although i got to tell you, I'm ready to get down to Daytona for some warm weather. <laughs> you know, when I think about NASCAR racing, it does give me that feeling of spring is going to be close. Well, people like seeing me this time of year. Terry, I think I'm like Poxitani Phil because they know spring's right around the corner when we're talking racing. And this is an exciting part of the year. NASCAR kicks off with a huge race at Daytona. What are some of the storylines for the Daytona 500 this year? Well, there's some good ones. There hasn't been a lot of changes to the format, which is good news because that means what they did last year resonated well with the fans, specifically stage racing. This notion of awarding points at different stages throughout the race it created a lot more sense of urgency on the racetrack, a lot more intensity earlier on. And as we saw, Martin Truex took full advantage of it. Some drivers didn't know how to play the stage racing, but Truex did, and he accumulated a lot of points that served him well as he headed into the playoffs. Certainly Danica Patrick may be calling it a career after the Daytona 500. We fully expect to see her new beau, Aaron Rodgers, on, on her pit box. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then I think the other storyline is just the young drivers, it's an interesting period. You've got this established veteran group, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, the Bush brothers, Martin Truex. But you've got this young crop of drivers, guys coming into the sport at an earlier age than ever before in our history, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old, Chase Elliott, Daniel Suarez, Ryan Blaney, um, Kyle Larson, some big names. And they, they race with a fearless, aggressive style, which makes it fun for the fans. And they're trying to make a name for themselves right away. Why do you think the ages are getting younger for the new guys? Well, I think they're getting opportunities earlier than ever before for some of the big organizations. So uh, Hendrick Motorsports, Penske Racing, they're giving opportunities and seat time to these kids at 13, 14, 15 years old. And I'll tell you, this is going to surprise you, but the other dynamic is video gaming, iRacing. There's a lot of these drivers are doing a lot of video gaming and racing electronically, and it's so authentic in terms of the, the tr configurations, the banking on these games, that it's helping to hone their skills before they ever get into a race car. William Byron's a great example of a guy who had very little seat experience. He's in the Premier Cup Series this year. And he attributes video racing to how he honed his skills. It's nothing like the turbo game I played at the game room. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, these simulators and it, the authenticity is incredible. You talk about Danica, and there are a few other drivers that called it a day or calling it a day. So it's a good time for these young guys to come up. But what kind of effect will it have on NASCAR losing people like Danica and Junior? You know, you never want to see big names leave, but it happens in every sport. The good news with Junior is much like Richard Petty. He's not going anywhere. We're not going to see him on the racetrack, but he's going to have a visible presence at the track each week, just like Richard Petty, just like Tony Stewart. So that's the good news is these big names that are retiring from on track are still going to have a presence, whether as a team owner in the pit box or in the broadcast booth. And, and so that's a good thing. And, and it's also an opportunity for these young guns to build their star power, and the best way to do that is to start winning races, and I fully expect we're going to see that this year. I saw Junior participating in Super Bowl pregame stuff. He's funny. He's going to be a good person out there in the media. I think he's going to be great, and NBC's very excited. You're going to see him over in uh, South Korea as part of the Olympic Games. He's part of the broadcast team over there, so they're making him visible in a big, big way. I think they realize what an asset they've got there with his following with uh Earnhardt Jr. Nation. I'm talking to Scott Paddock, the track president from Chicagoland Speedway. I'm sure you've got some great races coming to the track this year. We sure do. The big news for us is a date change. We're What's old is new. We're returning to our early summer time frame, and we are actually going to kick off NBC's second half of the broadcast schedule. So that's going to bring tremendous pre-event promotional support with the Kentucky Derby, the Triple Crown, the Stanley Cup playoffs, all of NBC's marquee program. So we're excited about that. And I think as Chicagoland residents know, when Memorial Day comes around, it's kind of the official start of summer. Kids are out of school. Families are looking for things to do. Camping, tailgating, music is a big part of our event weekend. So we're moving to a much less competitive time frame 
on the uh, on the year calendar, and we think that's going to bode well for us, and we think our fans are going to enjoy coming out and enjoying that four day race weekend. And it's got to be nice to kind of change it up a little bit. Fans get used to that certain time of year that you have the race, but it gives them a different opportunity to come out to the track a different time of year. It does, and a less competitive time of year. Chicago is a competitive market, Terry, but look what we went up against in September: the 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 NFL with the Bears, pennant races with the Cubs, the PGA Tour was in town. You had high school sports, college sports going on. If you're going to do an event, summer is the time to do it because we can pretty much own the market or dominate it in a big way with the the lack of competitive sports programming going on. Other than regular season baseball, it's uh, it's pretty much going to be all about motorsports between our NHRA weekend, the first weekend in June, and our NASCAR weekend, June 28th through July 1st. So. We think it's going to be good for us and good for our fans. Now, who do you like this year? Is there anyone that kind of sticks out that we should keep our eye on? Well, I think you're going to see a return to victory lane with Joey Logano and Clint Boyer. These are talented guys that won a lot of races, just had very down years last year. And, you know, Hendrick Motorsports struggled a little bit. Sometimes that happens with new aerodynamic packages that come into play. Some teams catch on to it quicker than others. But a team like Hendrick, you can rest assured they spent a lot of time this offseason working to get back on their game. So I think those drivers are going to be back. Uh, but I do think Joey Logano is the guy to look out for. Uh, he had an atypical year for him last year. He's a real talented driver, and I look for him to get back into the fold. In terms of rookies, look for William Byron. This kid's going to be strong. He's, I think he's going to win the Rookie of the Year. and. Uh, and uh, he's going to lead those young guns, and they're going to be in victory lane uh, a lot this year. When you head down to Daytona, what do you like to do? Is there certain places you like to visit around the track, or you know, you kind of leave it up in the air? Well, it's it's the Super Bowl of racing for our industry, so everyone is down there, from corporate partners to media partners, uh, even my fellow track presidents. So it's a great chance to kind of share some best practices, learn what others are doing well that we can incorporate to our facility, And just network and see a lot of folks and uh, all under the auspices at the World World Center of Racing, uh, the spectacular Daytona International Speedway. So it's a fun way. I still haven't gotten a good answer of why we kick off our season with arguably the biggest event of the year. Uh, Usually you culminate with that. Certainly that championship at Homestead is big, but... uh, it's, a, it's unique in our sport that you kick off with uh, with a big event like this. And it's got to be nice to be able to consider that work. <laughs> You're right. I'm very fortunate to work in, an, in the sports industry, and, and it's very gratifying to work in an industry where you can help put smiles on people's faces and help them create some great family memories. And just it's a great escape from life's daily pressures and stresses just get out and have some fun at the racetrack. If people are looking for info about the race schedule for Chicagoland Speedway, camping, the entertainment, all that, where should they go? They can go to our website, chicagolandspeedway.com. If they want to learn more about the drag racing going on, that's route66raceway.com. Parking is free at Chicagoland Speedway. You can bring your coolers into the grandstand. So affordable family entertainment. And with the proximity to the 4th of July weekend with our event this year, we are going to wrap our event weekend in a very patriotic theme with a lot of pageantry. It's going to be a special event weekend. Definitely look forward to it. I'm sure we'll talk to you as it gets closer again. Sounds a lot. Thanks for the support, Double T. No problem. Scott Paddock from Chicagoland Speedway. Rockford's home for Classic Rock, 96.7 The Eagle.